commentating today. This is beautiful Halifax, Nova Scotia. And the Metro Center is somewhat new, a multi-million dollar arena, where today a scheduled 15-round bout between the champion Matthew Saad Mohammed in his dressing room right now will be accepting the challenge of a 29-year-old from Cameroon, West Africa. There he is, Louis Pergo. His 19th bout, he has won 17, he's lost only one. That loss he has avenged. We look forward to a great deal of action here in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where it's uh, sunshiny, just beautiful, a little on the chilly side, but what a scenic spot. Tell you more about that later. Right now, back to Forest Hills and Howard Cosell. You're looking at a live shot from Halifax, Nova Scotia. This is the Metro Center. For today, this man, Matthew Saad Mohammed, formerly known as Matt Franklin, makes the third defense of his WBC light heavyweight title, a title he won April 22, 1979, in this unforgettable eighth-round knockout in Indianapolis over Marvin Johnson. His opponent today, the fourth-ranked WBC challenger with a record of 17 wins and 18 pro bouts, Louis Pergo from the Cameroons of West Africa. So today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship, Matthew Saad Mohammed defending against the challenger Louis Pergo. For more fields are alike, watch this, a good year radio city of Halifax, Nova Scotia, founded in 1749. Sailing ships have been on these waters since the 1700s. Two world wars, ship convoys were formed right here to head for Europe. Ferry boats connecting Dartmouth on the far side of this body of water and Halifax itself. It's a city in transition as we look at the ancient old town clock, practically surrounded now by glass and concrete, including this multi-million dollar Halifax Metro Center. And for the peninsula, the province of Canada that loves boxing, this is the first world championship bout in Halifax or in Nova Scotia. I'm Chris Schenkel, delighted to be here. Warm, friendly people. Today, two tough boxers, a champion. Well, there is Matthew Saad Muhammad, and he's in his third title defense today, going against the challenger from West Africa, now fighting out of Dusseldorf, West Germany, Louis Pergo, who's had only 18 fights. He's lost only one. That loss, he avenged a little bit later on, both weighing in at 174 and a half. Let's learn more about Matthew Saad Muhammad, an interesting champion. The story of Matthew Saad Mohammed begins here on the streets of Philadelphia. According to police records, he was found abandoned on these streets on June 16, 1959, at approximately the age of five. The authorities gave him a name, Matthew Franklin, and turned him over to a series of orphanages and foster homes where he spent his childhood. Matthew did not have an easy time. He became the leader of a Philadelphia street gang in his teens and ended up in this prison. It was a critical period for Matthew. He took account of himself, decided he needed to turn his life around. When he was released, he went into a gym for the first time, determined to become a boxer. Interestingly, his fights reflected his life because he constantly had to come back after a rough start. His first big fight was in 1977 against Marvin Johnson. And here in round three, Johnson hit Matthew with a non-stop barrage of uppercuts and hooks. Matthew rallied in the 12th and final round. With the fight on the line, he pounded Johnson into submission to win his first title, the North American Boxing Federation light heavyweight crown. In his second defense of that title, he fought Richie Cates. And here in round four, watch Cates on the left of your screen. That tremendous right hand dropped Matthew flat on his face. But Matthew got off the canvas and in round six delivered a tremendous right of his own that had Cates out on his feet wisely stopped the fight. Three fights later, he ran into another tough contender, Yaki Lopez, who had Matthew pinned on the ropes and in trouble in round 10. Look at the number of unanswered punches Lopez was able to land. But incredibly in the same round, Matthew came back with his own attack. A round later, the ref awarded Matt a TKO, and that win earned him a shot at the title. The new champ was his old adversary, Marvin Johnson, who again started like a house on fire and built up an early lead with punches like this in the third round that had Matthew holding on. 
round eight, Matthew had suffered terrible cuts over both eyes. In one last desperate effort, he caught Johnson on the ropes and didn't let up until the champion slumped to the canvas. Johnson struggled to get up. The picture of Matthew in the neutral corner was unforgettable. Johnson did beat the count, but the referee stopped the fight. Matthew Franklin had become the new champion. He had become somebody. It was after this fight that he changed his name to Matthew Saad Muhammad and publicly embraced the Muslim religion. His first defense was against former champion John Cuddy, who built up an early lead on his excellent jab and left hooks, like that one that staggered the defending champion. The fight was on the line in round 14, and again it was Matthew who pulled it out with this knockdown. He won a unanimous decision, and in the rematch, had his first easy fight in a long time as he knocked Conti down five times in the fourth round. An incredible series of comebacks, reminiscent of another Philadelphia fighter named Rocky. It's been so tough that Matthew wonders when people talk about the fight game. After being involved in it for many of years, you know, I can honestly say that it's no game, and it's for real. And what you see is blood, and that's real blood. There's no Rocky movie, you know. And uh, I think the person who played the best part for Rocky would be me. Well, this real-life Rocky has come a long way from the streets of Philadelphia. He now does his morning road work in the quiet suburb of Jenkintown, where he recently fulfilled a lifelong dream by buying his own home. It was an especially important purchase to a young man who spent most of his early days in orphanages and foster homes. He talks about it with justifiable pride. I always did dream of having a beautiful home. I wanted to, uh, you know, say if this is mine, this is something I really worked for. You know, coming home after a very hard workout, you, know, you can always sit back and relax and you can look and you say, well, you know, this is what I achieved. He's still decorating some of the rooms of his new home, including this, the living room. And when he gets a break in training, he spends a lot of time with his interior decorator, trying to make every detail perfect in this home that means so much to him. But as often as he can, Matthew tries to move away from the materialistic side of his life to the spiritual. He returns to Philadelphia, to this converted schoolhouse, which now is the local headquarters of the American Muslim Mission formerly known as the Black Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He feels strongly that his faith has given him the mental strength to straighten out his life and allow his talent as a boxer to lead him to the WBC World Championship. And of course, he continues his intensive training, determined that his recent success will not lessen his dedication. You can't just stop and say, well, now I'm at the peak, you know, I have everything. You have to train even harder. And they say it's easy once you get it, you know, it's not easy once you get it. It's hard keeping it. I know what I have to do in life. A fighter, they say, has a short period of time, say five years. So you make yourself now while you're champion, and you have to stand up and, and be your own man, you know. Quite a 25-year-old, isn't he? There he is live in the ring. He's got his championship belt on. He's held it for about a year and a month. And here's the man that wants to take it away. Sixth-ranked Louis Pergo will return for the opening bell. But first, this. Next, Nova Scotia Live. Matthew Saad Muhammad, the champion. You uh, see his record there. 17 knockouts in a total of 25 wins. And now going against uh, a light heavyweight that's just a little taller, and his name is Louis Perigo, born in the Cameroons, West Africa, has been fighting out of Dusseldorf. You see his manager, the sandy-haired gentleman, Mickey Duff of London, and the referee today is Rudy Ortega of Oakland, California. And in WBC rules, it's a 10-point must, the two judges and the referee score. Get an idea of their statistics, the same weight, which we'll talk about in a moment. Pergo is four years older. You see he has an advantage in the reach, and uh, it says two inches taller, and that's about it. Tale of the tapes. Scheduled for 15 rounds, the first opportunity for Pergo at a world championship. 
And he uh, easily made the weight at 174 and a half. Light heavyweight division limit is 175. We're all, whereas the man at whom we're looking, Saad Muhammad, because of an inaccurate room bathroom scales, thought he weighed 175. But when he came into the weigh-in this morning, he weighed 177. So within an hour, he dropped two and a half pounds. So he, like Perigo, as we're in the first rounds, is in at 174 and a half. Uh, the champion in white, you've seen him before here on ABC. You saw him win the title on ABC in the two defenses against Conti. He's uh, more a scrapper. He is a slugger, not necessarily a boxer. And early now, tall, spindly, light heavyweight from the Cameroons in West Africa, the southpaw, is opening up. And uh, most experts feel that he'd better do it early uh, because the champion is a devastating hooker and the other very very good right hand and could put him out Ortega the referee from Oakland California who has been refereeing for 21 years 20 championship bouts is one of the three officials judging the bout 10 point must eight ounce gloves an 18 foot square ring here in Halifax Nova Scotia the southpaw like Marvin Johnson and like Mate Parloff whom the champion in white fought twice each is accustomed to those that hit from the port side with that right-hand lead. And, of course, Perigo in the red uh, is a sort of a classic-looking boxer, but you see Matthew Saad Muhammad now trying to measure him, but uh, carelessly is dropping the dukes, and every now and then a jab from uh, Perigo is finding its mark. We're in the first round. Coming up to the one minute of round one of a scheduled 15-rounder. There go with a good right hand. Mohamed trying to get a body punch. Doubling up on, uh, in fact, making it a triple hook here in the first round. Formerly Matt Franklin from Philadelphia. Now Matthew Saad Muhammad in white, the champion. That was a stiff right hand, very, very short, a la Joe Lewis type. Didn't travel more than eight inches, but it hurt. Fair go. Ten point must remember. The winner gets ten points. The loser, anything less than ten. WBC rules. Mandatory eight count, three rule uh, knockdown in a round has been waived. Less than a half minute on the first round. That's Rudy Ortega of Oakland, California, coming here to East North Coast of Boston, Nova Scotia. We'll have the bell in 10 seconds. Halifax, Nova Scotia. In red, that is a challenger from West Africa who does not sit down between rounds. Well, he stood after taking a lot of solid body punches, two or three of them a little below the belt, but fighters are protected with a cup. The southpaw in red is 6'1", a couple inches taller than the champion, Matthew Saad Muhammad. And uh, in that first round, you probably saw the vicious body punches. That's sort of a frail body, the challenger, at six feet, one inches, and 174 and a half. So let's see uh, just how uh, strong his legs are and whether he can take the punishment that Matthew Saad Muhammad usually dishes out with 17 knockouts and 25 wins, trying to get an uppercut there. Both of them short. But counter-punching back is Louis Pergo. Pergo fought uh, April 14th of uh, last year and defeated Willie Taylor in New Orleans. Otherwise, his fights have been, all of his fights have, the other fights, I should say, have been in Europe. First championship out for a world title in Nova Scotia with its 7,000 kilometers of shoreline. Beautiful place. There you see him ripping the punches. Now look at the right foot of the champion, Matthew Saad Muhammad, and the sole has come loose from the, the other parts of leather. That's on his right shoe. There you see it on the left there. You can just see the sole now. They cause him uh, to stumble or stick. See what they'll do between rounds. 
course, her minute rest period will be coming up here in about one minute. Good little left-hand lead by Pergo. Get up. Come on. Matthew Sudmom had to drop two and a half pounds to get in under 175 pounds today. Did it by uh, skipping rope, equivalent of two rounds, and uh, dropping a pound, and then the other pound and a half by jogging. Should not have sapped his strength, although he does not look as sharp here in round two as he did in the first round of the Schedule 15 round. Defending his title for the third time in white, Saad Mohammed. And falling inside like that, leaving his uh, solar plexus open, is very, very dangerous on the part of the challenger in red. And a right-hand lead by the champion. Both those punches, but there was a left hook to the body that was vicious. They're going to rest in a couple of seconds. So between rounds, Sam Solomon, uh, Saad Mohammed's trainer, taped up that sole on the right white shoe of the champion in the white trunks. And before that second round ended, we pointed out a vicious left hook to Pergo's body. Pergo and right, the challenger from West Africa. 174 and a half, both light heavyweights. By the way, uh, we have to stop the right nostril, blood flowing from the right nostril of the champion between rounds. Done so by one of the fine cut men, Eddie Aliano. We mention that because Matthew Saad Muhammad in the past has uh, cut up easily over both eyes. He's been decked, but he's always come off the floor to win the bouts. So a cut man is a very, very important part of the corner for the champion in white. This is the third round scheduled for 15. Okay. Get out of there. All right. There go in red. Oh. A little bit disorganized, losing a little more of a classic boxing style that he had in the first round. Now he's back to it, upright, looking out right-hand jabs, but there's a right hand to the body that nearly was solid. More of a glancing blow. That one missed, partially blocked. Good defense by Pergo and Red. Another one blocked for the arm. Those are long arms that the challenger has. About two and a half inches uh, longer, the reach of that of Matthew Saad Muhammad. Saad Muhammad now trying to put a little more pressure on Pergo, who's trying to use all of this 18-foot square ring and trying to uh, keep the champion off balance with that right jab being a southpaw. Ooh, there was a right-hand lead that caught the side of the head of Pergo. Trying to be a moving target now, and a left-hand lead by the southpaw found its mark. He has only seven knockouts in 17 wins. You just saw Matthew Saad Muhammad. Does never, doesn't ever hide. More a fighter than the boxer, as you've already seen here today. Just rips punches. Watch yourself. Work now trying to stay on top of this. There go. There have been no knockdowns. We're in the third round with less than 30 seconds. Matthew now trying to land right hand leads here in the third round. Rudy Ortega of Oakland, California, the referee. Two judges are Dick Young of Los Angeles and Alex Nickerson of Halifax, Nova Scotia, from where we're speaking. Six foot one inch challenger, standing as you saw, never sits on a stool between rounds. Has been doing that for 131 amateur fights, and now his 18th professional fight. Louis Pergo, born in the Cameroons, West Africa. Remember the 1976 Cameroon Montreal Olympic team? But as the African nations returned home, he never got to go for a goal. Right now, trying for a world title against the champion, Matthew Saad Mohammed in white. And there is a good right hook. More of a hook than a straight right hand. A champion predicted that he'd knock him out in the fourth round. Well, we're into that stanza right now. Ergo in red has never been knocked out. And 
There he had his knees buckled. Another one. Beautiful shots that will take their toll, adding up. About two minutes remaining. Matthew Saad Muhammad is really unloading. Behind Sam! Behind! Behind Sam! Powder puff punches, but nonetheless keeping him busy. Keeping uh, Matthew Saad Muhammad a little bit off balance. That was a push, not from a heavy punch. Work your way out. Work your way out. Referee Rudy Ortega tells both fighters to work their way out. As we alert our local stations along the line that at the end of the round, we'll be taking a station break. The nosebleed uh, during round two, sustained by the champion, uh, did not bother him in the third round at all. You see Saad Muhammad trying to get in a lot of body punches. Work your way out. Watch your shoulder. Referee telling both fighters to watch their shoulders. They can do damage to the brow of the opponent. Another right hand lead and then a left to the body. Another one by Matthew Saad Muhammad. Less than a minute, round four. See the champion in white trying to cut off the ring and get in some good shots. Those are beauties, but there it go thus far. He may be wobbly right now, hanging on. Let's see as he gets out of the clinch as Ortega looks at him. And he touched his head as though he was butted by the champion. But I think he's in trouble here in the fourth round. 24 seconds remaining. Very loose, six foot one inch light heavyweight. 15 seconds till the bell ending round four. Let's go, get out We'll be back with more of Assad Mohammed Pergo WBC Light Heavyweight Championship fight after this message and a word from our local stations. Now we're back in Halifax, Nova Scotia Live, the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. The champion Saad Mohammed in the white trunks from Philadelphia and from West Africa in red. That is Louis Pergo, who has taken some kind of a beating thus far, especially in the body. Many uh, uninitiated fight fans really watching on TV can't feel or see the, the heaviness of body punches. More to the head, you can uh, appreciate those and relate to them at home. But there was a shot to the head, partially blocked, but Saad Muhammad unloading with everything he has. Work your way out, that's it. Physically strong, Saad Muhammad, as he's proven in the past with his 25 wins, three losses, and two draws. Third title defense. But Mickey Duff, the manager of Pergo, between rounds, really give Pergo a pep talk. He's done his own pep talking, because I don't know how he's really stood up. There! There's that party shot! A tremendous lift to the body, as we indicated, and Pergo is down. We have a minute 45 remaining. What a great game as can be, and... 29-year-old challenger from Cameroon, West Africa, fighting out of Dusseldorf, West Germany. That is it. About a minute and, well, we'll get the official time. Minute 41 left in the bout, or in the uh, round. And it was the fifth round, and Saad Mohammed, Matthew Saad Mohammed, was about a half round away from his prediction. There he is, successful in his third title defense. Body punching, oh, they're just tremendous. They add up, and as you saw, one more. And there you see the difference in their height, the same weight today as we get a replay of that left hook to Pergo's body, and a tiny cut had opened in the previous round, left eye of Pergo, but Saad didn't go for that. There you see it. it caught not only the body but appeared to have caught the chin on the way down watch this a little left jab now watch this shot that's it oh it was it was really in there quick and that is the first time that uh, their go has been knocked out another shot of it is rudy ortega uh, moves the champion away begins the count and then stops the fight 
will be returning to Halifax, Nova Scotia, where Matthew Saad Muhammad in the fifth round successfully defended his title for the third time and is still the WBC champion. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Teen of the fifth round here after uh, vicious, brutal body punches by this 25-year-old on my right from Philadelphia. A TKO over the challenger from West Africa. And Matthew, um, we've done a few of your fights, and you looked especially tough to the body today. Well, I want to say that I only trained at least two weeks for this fight, and uh, I'm just ready to unite the title. I'm looking for Mr. Eddie Gregory. Listen to me, boy, because I'm after you. I'm the man. I'm the champion. I'm, I am the undisputed light heavyweight champion. I, I have to believe you, Matthew. You've known you a long time. I keep telling the people. Let's take a look at that left hand. Now, there's Pergo in red, and you were chasing him uh, this afternoon. Now, watch. Do you have to tell us what <laughs> you unloaded? Well, I'm, hook, I'm, I'm throwing a lot of left hooks to the body. You can always get a southpaw by throwing left hooks to the body or either a lot of right hands. So I'm setting them up, really, with the left hook. Like I said, I only trained a week, really, to tell you the truth, for this fight. So I was a little stale and uh, up to par with my performance. What you see, that left hook really did it because it took its toll. Looked like it caught the body first and then even got him on the chin going down. That's what I call a double whammy. Yeah. Did, you, well, did, did, uh, did it weaken you by having to lose quickly two and a half pounds this morning? No, I've done it before on a lot of my previous title fights, and uh, it doesn't really do too much harm to me. It weakens me during the time that I have to really take the, uh, the weight off. Well, I want to say hello to my uh, stepfather, John Santos. Yes. How you doing, Dad? Yes, uh, a man, 25 years old, abandoned at the age of five. We've gotten to know him, and we love this guy. Matthew Saad Muhammad from Philadelphia. Congratulations. I want to thank my, Sam my Sullivan. Trainer, Sam, yeah. All right, we've got to go now, so let's go back to New York City. And uh, here is Frank Gifford.